Hello, my angels. Welcome back to the Balance Bond Podcast, Soul on Fire. It's funny doing this intro alone since I had Mr. Shaman Durek with me on last week's intro. He's so amazing. And if you're listening to this episode the day that it comes out, then you can probably still catch some Instagram lives from an event that we hosted together last night at Allo Yoga at the Grove. And this is the funny thing about podcasting. I'm recording this and the Allo Yoga event with Shaman Durek hasn't happened yet. I'm talking about it as if it was last night and saying you can still catch the Instagram stories because I'm thinking ahead for the podcast release date. And this is what's so funny about the cyber world. But if I can keep it straight and keep my dates straight in my head, then that's a win because I, as you have learned from last week's episode, my human design type is a reflector and all of my astrological signs are very airy. I live in the sky. I'm all over the place. That's why I'm so excited to spend the whole month of April in Bali to heal and to write and to tune in and to just be so connected with my deepest heart-centered self. And I don't know, it's not like I'm going to become less airy, but I'm going to feel very grounded. And I'm looking forward to that. So whether you were at the event last night with Shaman Durek, whether you caught some of the Instagram lives or whether you're listening to this at a way later date, I'm happy that you're here. And I'm so, so, so glad to have you listening to the Balance Bond podcast. If this is the first episode you've listened to, welcome. We talk about all sorts of things here from spirituality, Reiki, mastering our energy, manifesting. That's a big topic in today's episode to the other end of the spectrum, like wellness and nutrition and gut health. And I talked to some of the leading experts in functional medicine and all sorts of things in between. So welcome, welcome, and welcome back. If you are a returning listener, part of the TBB tribe, I love to have you here. I'm super thrilled about today's guest, the incredible Jamie Graber. And Jamie, oh my, do we have a history. We have a history together in so many ways. If you read my book, Breaking Vegan, then you know that Jamie is the former restaurant owner of Ginger Snaps Organic, where I used to go all the time when I lived in New York and I was a raw vegan. And she's the one who took one look at me after we met and said, you don't really look that healthy. You should consider incorporating fish into your diet. And she said this lovingly, but also very bluntly because that's part of who she is. And I love that about her. And she gave me a lot to think about to the point where I walked home from the East Village to the West Village and ordered myself a piece of fish, wild caught salmon. And after not menstruating for almost six months at this point, I got my period back within days. And I think Jamie has always been a body whisperer, a mind whisperer, and a mind shifter. And that's why I think she's in her perfect line of work now. And I'm so proud of her because getting to this place where she is in her perfect line of work as a mind shifter, Reiki healer, kundalini teacher almost, and all of these other incredible things that she does. She does deep healing work. She works with her clients to identify patterns, blocks, challenges, all sorts of other things in your life. She's a coach slash energy healer. She's amazing. To get to this point where she's doing this full time, she had to close her restaurant, Ginger Snaps Organic. That was a huge part of her identity for so long. And that takes guts. Her restaurant was not failing. It was not going under the ground. It was thriving. It. She had just moved to the West Village And I had my book launch party there when Breaking Vegan came out. She obviously took some shit for that because it was a vegan restaurant. And that's why I always say Jamie is loyal. Above all, she's an amazing friend. She's a huge inspiration and mentor to me. She is dear friends with previous podcast guests, 
Gabby Bernstein, Lacey Phillips, many others. Pretty much everybody knows Jamie. She's friends with Robin Euclid, who was last week's guest, who you guys loved, who for so many reasons is amazing. And I just couldn't feel more connected to her or inspired by her. I can definitely say after knowing her from her restaurant tour years that she is so much happier now. She's living in her light. She's radiating white light from all angles of her body. She does kundalini every day. She is a incredible energy mover and shifter. And if you live in New York or have the opportunity to go to New York, I would highly recommend working with her. You can find her on organicallyjamie.com, which will also be in the show notes. She's wonderful and she will not let you hide from your shit. I can tell you that much right now. When I was a raw vegan with a vegan brand, she didn't let me hide from my shit for two seconds and we didn't even really know each other at all. So I'm very grateful that we do now. I'm very grateful that our paths continue to cross in so many beautiful ways and I love her and I'm so glad that she's here. So before we dive into this episode with Jamie, I wanted to take a second to thank our sponsor for Sigmatic. I don't know if you guys have missed for Sigmatic on this podcast as much as I have because we took a little February hiatus for some planning reasons, but I sure have because I could talk about them for days and days and days on end. I love them so much. And in fact, their founder, Taro, whose last name I won't even attempt because he told me I don't have to. (laughs) It's long and Swedish and amazing. Um, He's coming on the podcast. I've already interviewed him and you guys are going to love him. So let's talk a little bit about Four Sigmatic and what you can expect from this product. They are a mushroom coffee brand, but not only mushroom coffee, they also have mushroom matcha. They have uncaffeinated drinks like chaga, which is an amazing adaptogen, the drinking style of mushrooms. And they have mushroom hot cacao. They have so many different things that they're rolling rolling out right now. I'm so proud of them. So if you're hearing the word mushroom in the same sentence as coffee, and you're thinking that I'm crazy, let me just tell you, it's not the portobello mushroom that you're used to in a stir fry or a scramble or anything like that. They use the magic of functional mushrooms like reishi, chaga, cordyceps, lion's mane, all sorts of other adaptogens like rhodiola, etc., to help us live healthier, more enhanced lives. They also make drinking mushrooms and superfoods completely delicious and very easy to do with their mushroom coffees and mushroom superfood blends and mushroom elixirs. They sell tins for at-home use and also single-serve packets for those of us who are on the go. And It's really delicious. All you really do is blend the product into a cup of hot water or nut milk or smoothie or oats, whatever it is that you're looking to pump up with the health benefits of adaptogens and you will get the benefits. I actually just drank one myself, which is why I am talking (laughs) at 10,000 miles a minute. At least I'm aware of it. I had a little evening pick-me-up of the caffeine-free chaga and the um, mushroom coffee mocha, the mushroom mocha, which is probably more coffee than I've had in my system in a while, even though it's only 50 milligrams, which really isn't that much. But their mushroom mocha with chaga is so delicious. It's something you'll reach for again and again and again if you have it in your apartment like I do. There's 500 milligrams of chaga per serving. It's vegan, gluten-free, organic, and paleo. And I add a little bit of stevia and a little bit of cashew milk and a little bit of water. And it's such a treat, especially since I've been off of coffee. So to get your special offer... Use the code BLONDE at checkout, that's B-L-O-N-D-E, for 15% off of your Four Sigmatic products. That is F-O-U-R-S-I-G. 
M-A-T-I-C dot com with the code blonde at checkout. So you guys will love them. Four Sigmatic, so awesome. Without further ado, let's head into this episode with my, one of my mentors and expanders in my life, Jamie Graber. Okay, guys, I am so excited about today's guest. I am sitting here with someone who, if you've read my book, you might recognize from my book. Or if you've ever been to New York or lived in New York at any point, you probably have been to her restaurant that she closed, which we're going to talk all about. And the woman who I'm sitting here with is Jamie Graber. Hi. 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 I'm so glad you're here. I'm so excited to be here. Yes. And her restaurant, just for those who are now like, wait, what What restaurant? was Ginger Snaps Organic, first in the East Village and then in the The West West Village. And how long has it been closed? It's been close a year. A, a year. little over, like a year and like, this is, I, uh, last week I celebrated, February 1st was my celebration of giving the keys back. Are you serious? February yes. 1st? Yes. Okay, so you're going to die because, <laughs> so that's 201. Th- those are the numbers. Yeah. And 201 is my, like my sign. It's yes, my you number. just posted about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because it's everywhere, like every single day. And if you notice, I live in a 201 apartment. Yes. And I've lived in 201s for the last eight years. I lived in a 201 in college. You did? (laughs) did. Oh my God. Yeah, college is when mine started. So you just celebrated giving your keys back on 201. Yes. That's a day that I celebrate every single year. And I I love that you say celebrated giving them back because this was such a celebration for you. Such a celebration. People will come up to me often and they'll be like, I'm so sorry you closed. And I'll just look at them and I'm like, I'm so happy I closed. Right. You know, it was a choice, you know, like I I could have kept going, you know, I definitely could have kept yeah, going. And it was just like such a choice of like, do I want to have a sane life and actually serve or do I want to keep doing this and just be miserable? Yeah. And you had asked me earlier, um, the final straw for me in, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, but the no, final ahead. straw for me was that I... Um, I was very unhappy. My husband, I would wake up every day and I would just say to my husband, like, I just, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. And one day he said to me, then don't. And I was like, huh, okay. Just kind of like let that percolate a little bit. And at this point I'd already been seeing clients one-on-one. So I knew the difference between doing work that made me happy and doing work that made me insane. And then I went to, um, a lecturer at Cat Beauty and Lacey was there. And I had never, I didn't know who she was, but um, I was mesmerized by her and like her movement and like, and the fact that she was talking about manifestation from a stance of no vision boards and like a different thing. And I'm like, and there was a little bit more darkness to it. And it really resonated with me. And so I went to sign up for a one-on-one with her. And for me, normally I'm like, oh, it's all about the signs. And so when I went to go sign up, it wouldn't work. So normally I would have been like, oh, forget it. It's not supposed to work. And then instead I emailed them like, excuse me, um, I was just at a lecture and (laughs) it's not working. And it's already a six month wait list. And I really don't, I mean, six week wait list. And I really don't want to have to wait. (laughs) Um, And they wrote back right away and they were able to get me in. And um, that was in September. And then November 6th was when, it was either November 6th or November November 7th actually, was um, when we were scheduled. And so I knew that I had to get really, really quiet to really figure out what it is I wanted to speak to her about because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to talk about with her because I wasn't sure what I wanted to manifest with Ginger Snaps because even when I was having the successful moments and the right people were writing and and it was packed and busy, there was still such sadness for me. Like it just wasn't, it didn't make, there wasn't joy in that. And so I wasn't sure what I was trying to manifest exactly. And so she and I were having the conversation finally. And I did all my expander work. And like, she's like, so who are your expanders? I'm like, none. And she's like, what do you mean none? And I'm like, I don't have an expander. And she's like, so who's doing it? Let's think about it. Who's doing it that like you see a career path and you're like, yeah, that would work. And I'm like, no one. And she's like, Amanda from Moon Juice? I'm like, "Mm mm-mm. I'm like, and she would just name a few different people. She's like, is Juice Press how you like it? I'm like, "Mm -mm." (laughs) mm-mm. And she's like, huh. 
And then we're silent for a second. And she just says to me, what if ginger snaps isn't it? And I was like, what? And she's like, what if that's not what you're supposed to do? And then we, and that's all we spoke about, right? And then we get off the phone. And for the next like week or so, I was just like, I had such this laser focused vision that ginger snaps had to be it because that's what I was doing. And I put so much work into it. And on some levels, it was very successful and like bringing me the attention and the acclamation and all of that. So it was like, oh, I never even thought that I could do it differently. And within a month, I gave notice. I remember finally my husband was just like, don't do it anymore. Just don't do it. And I gave notice and my landlord offered um, to half my rent for me to stay. No way. Yeah. For six months to a year, he said, because he loved me. And I was like, this is my test. Yeah. And I pe- And right away, I'm like, hell no. It's not about that. I can pay my rent. That was never the issue. It's right. that I'd be miserable. And um, yeah, and I went back to him and I said, yeah, like that's not, I, that's not going to work. And then I spoke to her again, maybe six weeks later, a month later. And I was telling her, and she's like, okay, well, some tests are going to show up. I'm like, no, Lacey, I'm like, the, the keys have been given back. <laughs> I'm like, there's no more tests. So I'm amazing. like, I am done. And yeah, and that was the greatest, most empowering thing I can do. And then getting to work with more and more clients and taking those steps. And like, you know, there was definitely... I say it now as if it was so easy because it's all working out and flowing. But like, you know, there was definitely moments where I questioned myself and like, who am I? And how will people receive me this way? And even though I was already working with people and even in my time in Ginger Snaps, I really worked with people. And that was like where my joy was when I sat down, like even when people like you would come in and we talk about our stuff. Um, But, you know, a new identity. And like, it was, it was just, yeah, I can't, it's been a year. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness. Well, it is a new identity and it's it's leaving something behind, like you said, that you put so much work and love yeah. and effort into. And six years. Six years. Yeah. That was my <laughs> next question. Um, six years. I mean, that takes such bravery to walk away from and such clarity. Yeah. So everybody listening, Lacey, that is Lacey Phillips, who's yes. been on this podcast and was such a hit because who's not obsessed with her? Yeah, I mean, she's, she's amazing. She is mesmerizing. Yep. That's the word that you used. Yep. And I mean, to be able to pinpoint like maybe this business that you've put your whole identity into that is you mm-hmm. isn't actually it. Yeah. I mean... It it was a life-changing moment for me because she gave me permission to think that I, it could be something else. So it wasn't even like closing ginger snaps. It was this eye-opening moment of it can be something else instead of it just not being ginger snaps in that like negative space. It was like, it could be something else. Right. And that's what's so beautiful. Yeah. And like I told you when you walked into my apartment, like <sighs> over an hour ago, because we've been chatting, um, is that your aura has expanded in every single direction. Thank you. You are so light. And I mean, you have this lightness about you that is so noticeable and just beautiful and amazing. And before, I mean, the last time, I don't know if this was the last time I saw you. Was that at your book um, launch? At my book launch at at your restaurant. (laughs) Like it was more noticeable to me that you were not happy where, I mean... When I lived in New York and you had the East Village location, there was more happiness because you weren't, I don't think you were at that, like, I'm done breaking point yet. And then there was such a shift and I was like, "Mm, I don't think she's very happy. I mean, just in my head. Yeah, I I remember at your, and the thing that was interesting when your book launch was going is that like Ginger Snaps was doing really well. I had a pretty good staff at that time. And I think that's why I was so sad because I'm like, all the things that I thought were making me unhappy about the restaurant before have now all been fixed. And I'm still really unhappy because I don't want to deal with, um, we went into it a little bit before, like, you know, for Ginger Snaps, a lot of the success was built on people cleansing, you know, and and people 
knowing that like mine was the cleanest and ginger snaps was the cleanest. And, you know, obviously you're a perfect person to understand that like you can get really, that can get really scary for people. And coming back to my disordered eating days, like it, I was watching my customers get triggered into being really scared of food. And I was realizing that I was part of it. And I was helping them get this idea that certain foods were scary and that they were labeling them bad or good or, and that it just started to question everything for me that when people were booking the cleanses, which on a business side was what you want, there was a little part of my heart that was like, am I, am I being of service right now? Or am I, is this really what I should be doing? Because originally when I first did cleanses, they were food, right? Mm -hmm. But the business side dictated what people wanted. And people wanted liquids because they because that was the easiest fix, mm-hmm. right? And the food cleanses that I started, I really loved because it was about portion. It was about understanding like why we eat. It was about looking at your patterns and getting the idea of like when you're on a cleanse and you have food all throughout the day, it's a little bit of a time I always said for people to intentionally check in, why are you eating? Are you actually hungry? Are you bored? Are you trying to like, you know, fill a void? What's happening? And I thought that a food cleanse was really good at getting you more intuitive in your eating, yeah, right? It was. I remember doing your cleanses with the chia pudding. Yes. I still think about that chia yes, pudding. I'll give you the recipe. <laughs> okay, amazing. And I remember that you had a sugar-free option, yep. which I loved, especially yes. in my... Highly orthorexic days, but I also loved because, I mean, I'm still not a big proponent of sugar. Mm -hmm. So I definitely see what you're saying with the food cleanses being, that's one thing, Mm -hmm. but then liquid cleansing is a whole other beast. Yeah. And it it really winds up getting, really getting fear around food. And because I had such a time where I was so scared of food, I would see customers come in who were having who I could feel it. And again, part of it was maybe me projecting it onto them, but it also could like feel it. And I don't, I didn't want to be part of that for someone. You know, I didn't want to put someone on a journey of realizing like, yeah, if you're on all liquids for seven days, your stomach is going to be flatter. It is. But then you're going to eat something and it's going to feel different in your body. And then you're going to start shaming yourself because you ate. And like, I don't, I didn't want to be part of that storyline anymore. And so it became a really weird thing where we talk about like blocks, right? So for me, it was like when someone would book that cleanse, I almost energetically was blocking it because it would be, it wouldn't be an automatic, like, oh, great. Like, this is great for my business. It'd be like, oh, I feel bad. Like that this hurts. Mm-hmm. This doesn't feel good. Um, and so that started to be, so I think when you came for your book thing and you, because of our conversations and because of your book, and I remember reading your book and loving your book, And because of all that, I think, especially when you showed up, it was like a really large reminder of like, I am helping perpetuate this idea that is fearing food and the orthorexia and all that stuff because of what my business is. And the more successful I get, the more I'm going to be doing that to more and more people. Mm -hmm. So you definitely caught me at a time of like a mirror of like, I don't know that this is what I want to be doing. And then when people are upset with your book and coming to me because I was having the party Mm -hmm. and they thought that like, how is a vegan restaurant? Could I do that? And I was just like, because I'm not like a moral, I'm not trying to morally police anyone. I'm trying to let people choose what works for their body. Well, isn't that the definition of like something so beautiful? A vegan restaurant is hosting a book launch for a book that is about following your own heart and not necessarily being vegan or labeled. That is what I think, at least when I used to be vegan, that veganism was all about. For me, it was like compassion and health and friendship and actually... And community. Community, yeah. Like being a part of people's lives in a positive way. And that's what you had always been for me. So of course I wanted to have my yes. book launch at your restaurant. And of course I wanted to host it because I'm like, here's this wonderful woman who's recognizing that you have to choose different things during different times in your life. And you have to be in touch with your body and in tune with your body to know what's working for you and what's not. Because I remember that conversation that we had and I was in East Village before yeah. we were doing, I think you actually changed your name and announced it at that party. I know. So actually your <laughs> restaurant was like hugely a milestone with so many things that I've done because I hosted an event with Max Goldberg, yes. which is actually how I met you yes. um, through Max. We hosted that event in the East Village in like 2014. And I remember I was sitting there with you saying, well, you, I was saying, 
I don't feel that great lately and this is how I feel. And you were like, well, are you getting your period? And I said, no. And you said, for how long? And I said, it's been like three or four months. And you're like, okay, that's a problem. That's a big deal. And I was like, okay, I know. But I had been thinking in my head, just before you vocalize it out loud, that's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. It's not that long. This can't be related to my diet. I'm so healthy. And of course, you know, that was a huge part of the reason why. So you said from your own experience, dealing with the same thing to eat some fish. And at first I was like, hell no, I'm vegan. I'm not going to be eating any fish. But I think it was a matter of, I want to say either days or hours, maybe hours. I think it was hours. I think you actually did it the next day because I think I remember you telling me that. Right, or maybe it was that day because I walked home from your restaurant (laughs) all the way to the West Village and I stopped at that place, Suen or Sawen or something. Yeah, Yeah, you had recommended it because I was like, where do people (laughs) eat fish that you can trust? Yes. You recommended that. So I had salmon and literally got my period back a couple days later. And... um. And then we had that event and I was so torn. Like how, how do you host an event as the blonde vegan yes. and be honest with people and not be so bogged down by the fear of what people are going to think? Yeah. Because if you're hosting an event and you can't be authentically who you are, it's just going to cause so much stress. So I remember much- for that. And you're, and I remember for you, what you were worried about was that you were like, but my, my, my fans want me to be vegan. And I remember saying to you, no, they want you to be you because that gives them permission for them to be them. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are really your fans are going to be so freed by the fact that you're telling your truth and that you're, you're doing it. And yeah, and you stepped into that so beautifully and it was, that was the best place to announce yes. for the first time because everyone was so supportive. Yep. The people there, most of the people there had already been through something similar. Whitney and Danielle from Sakara, mm-hmm. I remember they were like, yes. we've been there. You, yep. you had been in the same experience. Yep. Max totally understood. Everybody was so understanding and so supportive. And then I announced it on the internet and that was a whole different story. That was a whole different story. But it was beautiful because you opened up such a great conversation to be having because when people get caught into these labels, they disconnect from their body and they disconnect from like, you know, the what we're using to travel around this planet in this lifetime. And if you disconnect from that, you can't possibly be making choices that are going to be for your highest good because you're not connected to your vehicle. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, yeah. And then I remember just being so proud of you and like, all the stuff that was happening. And I remember it was hard. I remember it was hard because people were mean, Mm -hmm. which is like so bizarre to me. Like I could never imagine attacking someone on the internet. I couldn't, I don't really attack people in person, but like the fact (laughs) of like, and like they were like going after you, but like you really did open up such a huge conversation and look at how much better you are now and what you're doing and probably how many more people you're touching. Yeah, it was... Kind of like what you're saying with walking away from ginger snaps, everything that you had built. That's how it felt for me walking mm-hmm. away from the blonde vegan, even though the balanced blonde brand was taking its place, like something was taking mm-hmm. its place. I didn't have to delete my website or anything. It was just shifting everything that scared me so much about what I would lose and what wouldn't be a part of my identity anymore became just that much better better, that Mm -hmm. much more expansive, that much more just authentic in so many ways. So yeah, what I was doing all of a sudden started to feel amazing. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling my mom, this is so nice. I don't have the same pressure anymore because at least in my eyes, I was always looking at myself as this vegan blogger. So you you have to look a certain way Mm -hmm. if you're the picture of health. And I remember letting all of that go. Like I can look however my body is supposed to look and I'm allowed to do that. And like, that's actually part of my brand is balance and like authenticity and, and just, and fueling yourself, nourishing. So everything changed and so crazy that I announced it there. I still yes. remember that. And I remember I was telling you this earlier and me getting like pushback because I did that and allowed that and thought that that was a good thing. And I would tell my people who'd come into Ginger Snaps, 
that they shouldn't be vegan if that wasn't right for them or they mm-hmm. should be. And like, as we were talking about earlier, there are times in my life where I'll go back to plant-based eating and then I switch from that and then I go back into it. And I think that like the the trick is, and this is where like the meditation and all the other stuff comes in, is that like when you get yourself quiet enough to really be in your body and to feel what's going on in your body, you're able to make true intuitive choices with food. That means that you break out of a label and you just listen to what your body is wanting at that time. Exactly. And it becomes a whole different world of eating because there doesn't be, because that guilt thing goes away. And from someone who was like deeply anorexic um, for a a while, and definitely it's my natural go-to when things are like off. It's like, I I would like to constrict, like it's definitely a restrict, I should say. Um, It's interesting to know that when I'm so connected to my body and I see how things feel in it, there no longer is guilt about choices that I'm making. Even if I'm going to eat something that's not going to make me feel good at that time, I'm also just aware that I'm choosing it. And it really does take so much. I remember, as I imagine you remember, and probably a lot of people listening, like when you're having like really disordered eating, eating something that's not vegan or like not organic or, you know, has sugar, whatever it is that you're deciding is like the bad thing at that time, when you eat it, the amount of guilt is so like immobilizing and terrifying and it becomes like, like we're, I could have a day where I don't want to leave my house because I ate something that I wasn't supposed to eat. And it's really nice to get quiet enough to be in your body to know that like you can make choices that are good or bad and you don't have to like tie this label towards you in the sense of like, if you want to eat, like I was saying French fries, right? I was at Cafe Gratitude the other night. Yeah. And I wanted French fries. And because I didn't make such a huge deal about it, I just ate them with joy and love and great conversation with a friend. Yeah, maybe I didn't feel as light in that moment, but it was fine. And the next day I was fine. I didn't have to restrict the next day. I didn't have to like punish myself for eating those because it was a choice that felt good and in good company without the guilt of it, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes so much sense. And I think coming from the place that that you come from with food, where you mentioned you are so deeply anorexic and it takes so much mental strength to get out of that and then to really reframe your mindset with food yes. to be able to have that kind of freedom is everything. It's like living life again. It's, it's, and you, you're very much into meditation as well. And I really do believe that like that's so much, like all of my clients, like they have to have a meditation practice. And I think that with stuff like that, it's where you're able to like step away from this labeling and this idea that you put on yourself of these rules that you have to follow and instead get into this intuitive body where it doesn't make things as black and white anymore. You know, like if I was eating the French fries in a closet hiding, right, I'm going to feel a lot sicker about them than if I'm enjoying them with a friend, you know, and and having joyous conversation and connection. Um, And like, that's something like my husband, I'll say, is like a big part of my healing path with food because he's a meat and gluten loving chef. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so like for us, like when we started to like, I remember we went to, we really didn't, when I met him, I was still raw vegan. This was now eight years ago. And we went to Morocco together. And that was the first time we started eating together. And I was in Morocco, so I couldn't exactly eat raw there. That would have been like very scary. And we just, he taught me that like food can be celebration. And he thought, and he taught me how like there's so much joy in food and it doesn't have to be about overeating, undereating. It's just about being in the experience of how, of connection through food and that there's celebration through it. And um, I think that was a big part. I definitely have to credit him to a lot of that. And then getting quiet enough in the body to know that like eating French fries one day, most likely, depending on what's happening, depending on like if what's... One of my people who I speak to, we talk about like the empty garbage theory, right? And it's like, so if you have like a, if you think of like your stomach in like a garbage pail, if I have a, it all filled up to the top and I eat those fries, I'm going to feel awful, right? I'm just going to feel terrible because it's going to overflow. If my garbage pail is, uh, or my bucket, I should say, I don't even want to call it a garbage pail. My bucket is like empty. I can sometimes put that stuff in there and it doesn't overflow and make anything. So while I believe in like, you know, eating think French fries now and even eating like sugar if in the moment for a moment, I do believe in clean eating as the general. And then you can have a moment with 
foods that aren't necessarily as nutritive. So true. And that's something I've learned again and again in this whole journey ever since dropping that vegan label and then being all this other food being available to me was at first all of it was fine. And it's like, oh my God, I can eat chocolate. Yes. I can eat frozen yogurt. I can eat this. I can eat that. But once you pile it all on top of each other, you're eventually going to feel full. right, like terrible. And what's been so freeing to me now, three and a half years after walking away from the blonde vegan, almost four years because it was wow. June and now it's February. So that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, Oh my goodness, four years ago since I stood up on that table at Ginger Snaps and announced that. Um, <laughs> so crazy. I have I, to find those pictures. I know, I know. I will I send them, them to you. Somewhere. <laughs> um, yes, please. So I, what's freeing now is that I love feeling good and yes. I love eating well and I love eating, I mean, like I was telling you, mostly plant-based right now right because now. who knows what's going to happen down the line. I love feeling good and yeah. I have this major passion for wellness and health and so do you and yep. vitality and having energy and feeling good. But when you're recovering from an eating disorder, you're almost not allowed to feel that way or at least mm -hmm. that's how I felt. Yeah. Um, I'm not allowed to embrace how much I love health and wellness and healthy yes. food and yes. making vegetables in my kitchen and overflowing my kitchen with all yeah. this stuff that you can see right now. <laughs> Every adaptogen and it's like a whole yeah. apothecary in there. It is a beautiful I, apothecary. <laughs> I felt like I wasn't allowed to do that because everyone was would think, well, she's supposed to be recovering, from right? And she's orthorexia. supposed to like have no rules around food. And like, mm -hmm. I think the trick is, is that like when you when you are when you get into the, all the disordered eating, you no longer have joy around food, right? And they, and now you're putting in fear, right? And and as we all know, anytime fear is in any equation, it's never going to lead to anything good. And I think that the difference around food now is that. We're not making those healthy choices because we're fearful of weight gain. We're fearful of our skin looking bad. We're fearful of all that stuff. We're making a healthy choices because it feels good, mm -hmm. you know? Such a huge difference. Such a and huge difference. You can't always explain that to someone on the internet, at least with my life, because I share so much yes. of it on the internet. You're so vulnerable. Um, it's amazing. <laughs> I try to share, you know, everything, but I still get people like, why are you doing this? That's so unhealthy. And... I've had to come to a place to understand, well, A, it's triggering something in them and that's mm -hmm. why they're saying what they're saying. And B, there's just no possible way through the internet to explain it all. But And you don't I mean, have to. And, right. And I know what's <laughs> happening in my head, which, yeah, I don't have to, which is that this has nothing to do with weight loss. This has nothing to do with like this obsession with purity that mm -hmm. I had. This has to do with feeling good, getting healthy again. Being connected to your body. Getting rid of these rashes yeah. and being connected to my body. Exactly. So it's just different. You know, I, like people will be like, well, you're still disordered eating because like you won't eat dairy and you won't eat gluten. I won't eat dairy and I won't eat gluten because I get horrific stomach aches. Right. So that's I don't even eat them. more being connected to your body. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, that's why it's not about weight loss for me because I'll eat French fries because for some reason, again, within reason, I can eat them and I don't feel awful. Right. Mm -hmm. But if I ate that, my husband makes cheese for a living. And I love cheese, like on a, like, you know, very fairy tale level of what cheese tastes like. But totally. for me, it's just like, it doesn't work. It winds up giving me horrific stomach aches. But do I judge someone who can eat it? No, eat it if it's working for you. Right. Amazing. <laughs> if it works for your body. Yeah. Great for you. The same thing. Like, I haven't had meat in 20 years. I can't eat it. It just doesn't digest in my body. And I remember that on a deep level. Fish works better for me. Right. And so I'll eat that. So it's not that I think that fish is not eating an animal. Fish is still eating an animal. I'm aware of that, but it's an animal that my body can process. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Know? I love that you say I'm aware of that because yep. it's like, <laughs> yes, we know. And people are always going to try to make you aware of what they think you, you know, they know that you don't know. But you know, I mean, you know, you've been through all of it already. Yeah. We make these choices for ourselves. And I think that's the thing that's like so tricky out there, especially when all of us are putting our lives more publicly out there is that we're all individuals walking the planet and everything's going to change for us from different times or different things. And I think that when someone thinks they have the answer for everyone and everything, that's the people that you should run clear from because totally, no one, if it's not that simple, it's not that simple. And there, we are such complex beings that 
I don't think there's one diet for everyone at the very least. And I certainly don't think there's one diet for me all the time. So there'll be right. times where I'm much more plant-based and then there'll be times when I'm not. And then when I go to like Europe and stuff or traveling in general, I'll often have gluten and I'm fine. And I and I know a lot of people are like, yes, because it's a lot, a lot less processed. No, it's because I'm on vacation. And so the cortisol is flowing differently. The stress level is differently. And right. so there's You're not any yourself. inflammation in my body. And so it can, pro- and my bucket is probably very empty. So there's more room in there. Mm-hmm. But if I stayed on that vacation eating for a longer time, then most likely I'm going to start to feel sick. Right. You know? Like I did when I studied abroad in Italy for five months and oh. ate <laughs> that way for such an extended period of time. I mean, this was years ago. I was in, I was a junior in college, but I, what started as like, oh my gosh, I can eat everything, pasta, gelato, mm-hmm. turned into this five month, like I actually live here yeah. and I actually am getting so so affected by this yeah. food. Um, and because your stress levels are changing. Right, exactly. Because it was just turned into just my life. But that's such a good point that yeah. when our cortisol is low and we're on vacation and mm-hmm. we're enjoying ourselves, we and can handle things so yeah. differently. And your inflammation is low and you're probably like walking around and you're just in like a very different state. And without a doubt, I think that if people really paid attention to their bodies, they can recognize like how different their digestion works when they're eating in a state of stress and when they're eating in a state of like calm and peace. Like it's it's going to be completely different from the body. If you just even think about it, like when you're in a stress mode, there's constriction, right? And when you're and when you're flowing, you're flowing, right? And and obviously you're going to be able to have a little bit more freedom in it. And listen, there are some people who can eat stuff and they don't get as affected by it. So they say. I imagine if they like. Mm-hmm got a little quiet that they would see that different foods are going to, you know, and and for some, like, I definitely believe there are many people who can easily eat gluten and there is no issue. I 100% believe that. I just am not one of them. Before we get too far into this conversation with the amazing Jamie Graber, I wanted to take a second to thank our second sponsor for today's episode, Woo for Play. So Woo for Play is this incredible coconut oil-based lubricant for sex. And there's so many different reasons why I love it, specifically because it's really empowering women to bring the conversation of bringing products into the bedroom. I know for me, before Woo for Play, I never really took the initiative to bring any specific product into the bedroom for sex, but this company inspires me to do so for so many reasons, one of which is because the packaging is really cute, very sleek, very modern, something that I would carry around like a skincare product or a hand lotion or something like that that's really cute. It's very on brand with everything else that I do. And also because it's completely organic, non-GMO, antiviral, antifungal, all natural, full of the good stuff that I promote and talk about and ingest in my everyday life. So why would I not use it? on my body and my loved one's body. So there's a really short ingredients list. There's coconut oil, natural stevia, vanilla essence, beeswax, and that's literally it. It feels smooth and silky. It smells really good. It's completely all natural, as I mentioned, and beyond being all natural, it also kills germs, increases sex drive, is totally free from chemicals, because why would we want to put chemicals anywhere near those down there areas? We really, really wouldn't. The stevia is full of antioxidants, and the vanilla essence promotes sexual arousal, and it also soothes inflammation. So there's so many reasons to use it, no reasons not to use it. So for 10% off of your first order and free shipping, visit www.wooforplay.com, spelled W-O-O-F-O-R-P-L-A-Y.com, and enter the promo code BLONDE at checkout. That's wooforplay.com, promo code BLONDE, capital B-L-O-N-D-E. When it comes to you, the box is in very discreet packaging, which... I appreciate when you're ordering 
a product for the bedroom. So that's something that all of you ladies and gentlemen should know. And it's just going to make your sex life better. And it's completely natural. So let me know what you think in the Soul on Fire Facebook group. And without further ado, we'll head back into this episode with Jamie. People will say to me sometimes, well, how do you have all these health issues? If you're so healthy, you put so much emphasis on feeling good. Like for example, I don't really drink alcohol at all anymore. I exercise every day. I eat so well. I make almost all my food right here in this kitchen, all this stuff on and on. And I'm the one with hives and rashes and fibroid and parasites and a tapeworm and gut health issues, candida, on and on. And I mean, my answer to that question is, I think I'm so aware and I'm so hypersensitive Mm -hmm. to it that I just know that that's what I have going on. And so I'm dealing with it to fix it. But I think with other people, I mean, my Ayurvedic doctor says 85% of us have parasites. We do. And we actually all have candida as well. Obviously, there's different levels of it in different people. But I think that, yeah, it's like a deep awareness where like I literally can feel the way something makes me feel as soon as I eat it. I know how I feel. And it's like, and it's very quick. And I also know the foods that are going to make me not go to the bathroom versus the foods that are, that are going to get stuck. And like, I think that a lot of people are walking around just in complete disconnection from their body. So they don't realize that they're feeling the way that they're feeling, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's so true. And it's also like, even like with exercise and stuff, like when, you know, back in my days of like my deep anorexia, I also was highly they called it like exercise bulimic. And so I was like exercising for like six hours a day. And then there'll be phases where I'm like going to the class five days a week. And now I, for the past like six months, I go to the class like one day a week and I go to Kundalini and I do Kundalini seven days a week. And that works for me. And there was a time in my life where going to Kundalini would have been like, well, that's just for the mind. That's not for the body. And now for me, I'm like, Wow, that was quite a workout. <laughs> I feel that way now too. We've had such similar shift in that way because I was very hard on myself with exercise for a long time yeah. and it would always be like kundalini is just sitting there. That's what it would be in my mind now. I I mean, it is in many ways like it's moving your body. It's, it's moving energy through your body. Yes, it can like those classes now that I it's a totally different experience. And I realized that before, like I thought that I wasn't working out if I wasn't like beating myself up. For me, I also, um, I think you remember the story. I was at Barry's boot camp and I fell off the treadmill and broke my arm. (laughs) I remember this. And then you couldn't work out. I couldn't work out for two years. And ever since I was in college, I've had this issue with working out where it's become very addictive for me and it, and not always the healthiest of obsessions. And so when I had that, I remember the doctor saying to me, like, you know, you just broke your arm. And I was like, okay, well, like, when can I go back to Barry's? And he's like, okay, I just told you you broke your arm. And then I'd be like, well, can I go to Soul Cycle? And he looks <laughs> at my husband and he's like, she doesn't understand the language that I'm saying to her. He's like, tell her, bye-bye, Barry. <laughs> Bye bye, Soul Cycle. And it was, yeah, it was like he was not, he, he like was used to dealing with like high level athletes. And right. I was like this like girl who just broke her arm and just wanted to go back to Barry's boot camp. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh God, she's so insane. And I was, because that's literally all I could think about. And um, so I could not work out for two years because I wound up getting frozen sho- shoulder. Oh, yeah. And because I tried to go back to Soul Cycle too soon, which he specifically said not to do. And I was like, I know me. And I did it. And I wound up hurting my arm all over again in that class. And then I was scared to get back into working out. And then that became a whole thing. And like now I find really balanced with it where like I go to I go to them when I'm in the mood and I don't go to them when I'm not in the mood. Mm-hmm. And it feels very freeing. The thing that I don't miss is the kundalini. Like that has to happen every day because it checks my body and it checks my head and it changes my entire outlook on whatever is going on in that moment. And I think that the exercising of the mind is the thing that I'll say at at this point, and that can change. But at this point in my life, I think is like the most important thing anyone can do is constantly be in a space of exercising the mind. Absolutely. And you're doing your Kundalini teacher training. And you know, it's so crazy when you walked in and I noticed your aura and your energy and like the light 
beaming out of you. I was thinking I love you. <laughs> Kundalini. Like yeah. Kundalini has some some role in this. And then you immediately said, Well, I haven't missed a day of Kundalini in, in six months. Yeah, six yeah. months. And well, for someone like me who like loves and knows the power of Kundalini, and also I know that I don't get there enough. It's so cool. Like, it's so inspiring more than it's, you know to see how it's affecting you and this lightness that you have about thank you. you. <laughs> it's so cool. It's, it's like, for me, I it's just the most powerful. It's the most powerful thing I've ever done. When I lived in LA back in 2000, I used to, my friend Heather, she's like the one who just taught me like goddess energy and that idea of like how, how much we have going on in ourselves. And she would take me to the beach at five in the morning and have me do this kooky thing called Satnam and all this Kundalini stuff. And it had to be at five in the morning, we'd go. And I'd be like, I don't know what this is, but I feel amazing. And like in that time, like everything really flowed and like, and granted, I was also young and stupid back then, but (laughs) thing was like, things were like very flowing. And then I would go to Yoga West and like, that was like my thing back in the day. And I really loved it. And like, you couldn't leave the class without feeling better and without having your brain rearranged. And there are moments during classes where I'm like full of anger and like pissed off and like think the teacher's stupid and want to, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to use a curse word, but I'm like, F you. And like, I get all angry, but by the end of the class, that's been released. And it's, I, it can't, it, you can't leave that class without feeling better, even if you were frustrated during it, where you're doing like breath of fire for 11 minutes with your arms mm-hmm. up in the air and you're like, you've got to be kidding me. Totally. Um, but then you get nice arms. <laughs> right. you know? But yeah, it's such a powerful, powerful, powerful practice. And I think like for all my clients, they have to, meditation is number one. They have to do it. And for me, I find that like kundalini meditation is probably the most easily accessible and the easiest to notice the transformation right away. Because I do TM every morning and I've been doing that for years. I think like I started, I learned it like five years ago and I had in in and out with it. And for the past like two years, it's been very consistent and I love it. And I think it's an incredible practice and I still do it. But there's something very different about the way the meditation and the breath work and the mantra that happens in Kundalini, where it's like an automatic, very quick feeling where you can be, I can have a day where like, obviously still shit goes wrong. Sorry. Um, <laughs> you can curse. Still, <laughs> um, so, you know, stuff goes wrong, um, and and the frustrating moments and things that happen that you wish would happen differently in that moment. But like, you can get on that pillow and like swing your arms around the chant for whatever it is for like eleven minutes, and you come out of it and you're like, oh, oh, maybe that's why that happens. I don't have to be attached to that outcome that mm-hmm. I was attached to. And like, you know, when they talk about the neutral mind is a lot of like my work is like, yeah, like when you get to the space of a neutral mind and you're able to like really get quiet enough to know that there is no right, wrong, same thing with the labels. It goes back to that same thing. You have all this freedom to have no attachment of bad feelings towards anything or even good feelings necessarily towards everything. It's just like all is. Yeah. And that's what I think Kundalini delivers in the most beautiful and quick yeah, it's Quick. immediate. Yeah. It's immediate. And it's the only place where I, well, not the only place, the easiest place for me to have like visions, like yes. psychic type of visions. Mm-hmm. And this has been maybe for the last like over a year, I've been developing this part of me that's kind of like medium. Like I, I'm I've sure. been speaking to like people who've passed on and sometimes it's really hard for me to access, which is so confusing and frustrating because I have it and I'm like, Mm -hmm. this is real. And then I don't. And it's my consistent Kundalini practice or my inconsistent right now. (laughs) But when it's consistent, that's when, I mean, the third eye opens up and everything is happening. Yeah. It's like I, the third eye stuff is like such an interesting thing because it's like when I'm, I have my new office and everyone's like, how'd you like furnish it so quickly? And like, how did this happen? And I'm like, because I've been seeing it, like the visual has been like so clear in the, in the Kundalini stuff where I literally, it's, I'm like, oh, it's north of where I live. Ooh, I don't really want it to be a nomad, but I guess it's north of where I live and it has high ceilings and it's white. And like, ex- and then like I walked in the room and like, it wasn't even like a question as soon as I saw the office. And like, I randomly, oh, what's so funny is that I was on a flight to Colorado and I was listening to your podcast um, on the flight with um with Lacey is what I was listening to. And 
I'm on there and I'm and I'm on Google as I'm doing it just because at that time I had just been renting rooms by the hour. And I really felt that my practice needed to expand and it needs to be in my own space because for mine it's like such an experience thing that it that it really needs to be a room that I can create on a consistent basis. And I've been like seeing it in the visions, but not totally, you know, closed handed, like fisting it, like this is what it needs to be. So very lightly, gently knowing it was coming. And on, while I was listening to you guys, I was Googling, trying to find a space. And I was on the fit, because I was so enthralled into that podcast, I wasn't like, like angrily, like going through Google that I wound up on the fifth page of Google. Like who goes to the fifth page of Google? I was on the fifth page and I found this place and I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. I'm like, I see the picture. I'm like, oh, it looks like they're white spaces. Okay. Oh, I'm like, it is. It's north of me, but thank God it's not nomad. It's only like four blocks north of me. I'm like, oh my God, I think this might be the place. And I wound up seeing them like on that Monday when I got back and and it just was, and like, it, it literally looked exactly like what I've been seeing. Right. It and that's so from the sense. Kundalini because right. I was able to like see. We did this one meditation with Harjiwan and he was like, and it was crazy. Like I'd never experienced such an eye opening in that thing. And I go up to him and I'm like, I'm like, um, so what was that meditation exactly? And like, what was that song you played? And so like, I need to know because like, I just opened it. I've never experienced anything like that before. And he was like, Jamie, <laughs> we just cleaned it for you. You don't need that meditation to access it anymore. He's like, you just need to be quiet and you need to do your, your meditations, whatever meditation that is at the time, and you'll be able to see it again because we just cleaned it for you. But you don't have to be attached to that meditation. And like, it was a really interesting thing for me because I realized that like, it's not that you have to be a specific meditation in the Kundalini. You just have to like, I think, commit to sitting and getting quiet. And I do think the mantra helps Mm -hmm. and just committing to even, I'm going to say, because I don't think there's an ant, everyone, I don't know that Kundalini will speak to everyone, right? For me, it's highly, highly possible. But I think for everyone, some form of meditation practice where they're sitting and they're getting quiet is one of the most life-changing things that you can do for yourself. I totally agree. I think, I mean, yeah, kundalini is not going to be it for everybody. And I can't imagine how it couldn't for certain people because it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. But then again, I know it won't because I know so many people who it wouldn't speak to them. Um, Right, some of them will be too kooky for them. And like for for them, it's like they're too reserved and they won't be able to understand like, well, if I don't know what the matra means, how is it doing anything for me? And so if they can't believe... You yeah, know, then it won't. And then, then some people work. TM is like the worst thing in the world. They hate TM. They think mm-hmm. it's awful because they want more of a spiritual connection to something. And then you see all these other people who are very, very high level who will tell you that TM is like the greatest thing that ever happened to them. Right. I know. It's so true. What is your meditation practice? Um, I do TM mm-hmm. and I kind of, I mean, I have like, it takes a lot for me to get my mind quiet. Mm. I mean, I'm sure you can relate and like everybody <laughs> listening can relate. But um, I have weeks and months where my TM is like every morning so strong. I feel so good. It shapes my whole day. And other times where it's the last thing I want to do and I'm mm-hmm. like running away from it. So yeah, I mean, I'm still working on it in a we way. We all are. Yeah. We all are. Totally. Yeah, I think with with my TM, it's funny. So when I started doing the teacher training and there was like so much meditation going on, I'm like, you know what? Like, I don't need TM anymore. Like I'm doing this and this is like so much better for me. And it was probably like three days had gone by and I hadn't done the TM and I totally thought I was fine. I was on the phone with my friend Meredith and I'm like, yeah, I don't think I need TM anymore. Like this is totally working for me. She's like, huh, interesting. And then like that next day, I was like confused. I didn't know where it was. I was like foggy. And I was like, what is different? What is happening? And for me, it was, I, I, the next day I started the TM back again. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, there I am. I have like, which I imagine that you can relate to, right? Like I have anxiety stuff, right? Like, and usually morning time, especially since like, that's where a lot of the stuff happened at Ginger Snaps for me, where like the anxiety would run of like someone not showing up and like all the staffing stuff. Mm -hmm. And so mornings became a really hard thing for me where like wake, like even going to bed at night, I was like, oh no, I don't want to wake up tomorrow. I don't want to wake up tomorrow. And so for me, TM, and that was like the last year of Ginger Snaps is when I really started to put it in, was it helped me to have that pause 
between starting my day and waking up. And so I actually do TM lying down in my bed. And I tell my clients, they don't do TM because I can't teach TM, but with like the kundalini stuff that I give them often. And I'm like, if it's easier for you to commit to it where you're just like lying down and I'll put like my hands on my stomach and do Reiki to myself and then and close my eyes and do my mantra. So I'm up, but I'm lying there. It just eases me into the day where it doesn't have to start with like social media anxiety and just like, you know, emails or or whatever it is that's going to get me into that space of anxiety. I'm able to like ease in so that when the things happen, there's always a pause between reaction. And I think that that's because of a, um, of a consistent meditation practice for me at least. Yeah, definitely. That makes so much sense. How long do you usually do it for? So... I do the TM for 20 minutes every morning in the way that I just described. Like I've never set up and do it. I'm very, very bad. I don't do the five o'clock one. <laughs> no. <laughs> you got to do what works for you. You yeah. find what works for you. I mean, people swear by that one. They say that it's the one that like really has like the juice in it. But I'm also doing a lot of kundalini meditations throughout the day. Like I'll, I have my like sheepskin at the at the office, you know? And, <laughs> Sitting yeah, on mine and I, as we speak. I'll sit on that or I'll sit on like my bio mat. And like, so in between clients, I'll just do different kundalini meditations throughout the day, which really help me. And so I feel like that's my five o'clock because they're always getting sprinkled in or like before I go to bed, I'll do one. Yeah. So that's really helpful. And like, I don't even know. Sometimes I'm like, I don't even know if it's TM that I'm doing. Like, because I don't think that they want me lying down. <laughs> right. No, I think a lot of people lay down and do oh, okay. it. Yeah. I mean, but it's true. You just have to make it work for you. It doesn't have to be. I tell people do sat wrong. Like, right. do, like, I don't know that this mantra means anything. I don't know. It's just what I was taught and it's been helping me. And so I don't right. need to challenge it. But for anyone, it's like, close your eyes, put your hands on your stomach so you're super grounded, breathing in and breathing out with a conscious breath and saying something so that you can try to keep the mind in the mantra instead of in the list of what you have to do that day. Exactly. And knowing that's going to go there anyway, but then just try to go back to the mantra. Yeah. You just know? bringing the focus back. It's so, yeah. I mean, it's so much more simple than yeah. we make it out. So I want you to tell us about what you do now. You are a mind mind sh- shifter. I call it like mind shifter and uh, energy um work. And so this is what you've been doing since you closed the restaurant. Yeah, I started doing it before I closed, which is part of why I think that also did help me because I I really was able to see a clear difference between when I was doing that work versus restaurant work and where my joy was. So sometimes it's about food, but it never like stays about food. But Basically, it's about uh, conversation. You know, you come and we have a conversation about what's going on and what we want to work on and like where, whether it be like blocks or like things that you're trying to call forth that like you're not able to do and old stories that you're telling yourself. And then we have the conversation so that we can reframe it and that you can see it differently and see like all the different possibilities instead of, you know, it's interesting when you come to something like focus, because like we want to be focused on something that we want, but we can't also think that we know the answers. Because for example, if I like thought I knew who my husband was supposed to be, I never would have married my husband at the time. Like if I was making a list, I was raw vegan. I was highly addicted to, you know, being quote unquote healthy, all the things. And my husband is completely different than that. Right. And so, um, (laughs) and so, Um, for me, for me, I think that like, you have to have an idea, but it has to be like a loose idea of what it is that you want to bring forth. And I think that like, when you're able to open up where it's not this like laser focus of what it is that you think you need and just know that maybe it's more touched on a feeling or something that you're able to see more possibilities in every situation. And so we try to have those conversations so that we can change the thoughts. And then we go and we do energy work, which is going to be a blend of Reiki and light touch and sound. And you're on a biomat and there's... um then what we're doing is we're having that conversation. We're getting you into the subconscious state so that we can have all the messaging that we just had go on a deeper level to help the reprogramming of the stories so that we can like live a different life 
is the kind of the work that I do. Wow. <laughs> so I hope I explained that well. No, you totally did. So how long do people usually come back to see you? Is this like so so for me, because I um what works for me, um, in the sense of like what the uh, therapies or the different healing modalities that work for me is consistency. And so most people will see me either weekly or biweekly. And Sometimes they'll continue to see me because they want they cleared that up and now they want to clear this up. And so um, I think that most of my clients stick to like they might start off weekly and then they'll move to bi-weekly, but it's a consistent relationship where they're accountable. And then like for me, even though I'm very, I love the woo-woo and we do a lot of the woo-woo, um, we also have like very clean action steps that people have to take and clear directions that they can actually move forward and not get into this space of because while I'm obviously spoke so much about meditation, I believe for every meditation you do, you need to take an action step forward. So on my days when I'm struggling and I like might be meditating for four hours, in between each break, I have to take an action step forward. I'm not allowed to just sit on the pillow. So I go in to get the answers of what I'm supposed to do on the pillow, but um, action is really important and clear action. And so that's why a lot of people, why it becomes something where you're like, you're showing up more and more because you have to keep on being accountable. And I think that people, people often benefit from having someone who holds them accountable. And like a lot of my clients will say, I didn't want to meditate all week, but I knew that I'd come here and you wouldn't let me not. And you'd be mad at me if I didn't. So I did. And I got this answer, which I didn't realize, like, and I was able to do this. And then I was able to send that email and whatever it is that they're looking to do. And like, they're able to because they know they're going to see me. And as you know, I'm like, I'm a strong personality and like they want to um, show up because I'm holding them in a light that they want to be. It's Lacey very much did that for me. Like when we would talk, she held me in the light. Like she saw me how I wanted to be seen and how, what I wanted. And so whenever, and I didn't speak to her that often, but I knew that when I was going to speak to her, I wanted to have all these things in line because I wanted to be that light that she held of me. And so, like, I was just laughing with her. She came to see me, like, last week. I think, yeah, it was last week. And I was like, I knew I had to have the office all solidified because I knew you were coming in January. I'm like, I'm like and I knew that that was a good timeline for me, you know? And so I think that that's... Um, for me, like, I think a lot of people are also on different parts of the path. And so a lot of the clients who come to me are kind of um, the ones who see me like weekly are at the beginning. And so that they, they, they want more direction. And then when they get better, they want to move it into biweekly. And then some people start off with already like, let's say they're already meditating and they're already taking some action, but they want more guidance from that. And so then they'll do it like monthly. And so it kind of, um, it kind of depends. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's different, you know? Right. But I do think consistency. And so for me, like, I really do believe that, like, with anything that you're doing, whether it's um, if you're going to a coach for food stuff, if you're going for mind shift, if you're going for to anyone who you're seeing, I think that even like, let's say massage, right? A consistent work of any of those wins is going to be better than doing it when you just are having a moment and you just need it as like a quick fix mm -hmm. because it's in that maintenance that you're able to like really get the deeper work going as opposed to just fixing like that problem that just happened. Like, oh, my back's out. So I'm going to the masseuse. Well, if I kept on going to the masseuse after my back was out, it probably wouldn't spasm them up again because I'm constantly working the muscle in the direction I want it yeah. to go. So, yeah. yeah. That makes so much sense. Yeah. It was so crazy when I was in New York because, well, I was trying to come in and see you and yeah. then it was the just a, the week of like everything was happening while I was there, which is how I always pack my New York weeks. But yes. then everyone who I was seeing had just been coming from seeing you. Yes. Like that. Okay, that's why I was like, why is this world so small? Like there was Lacey who I was talking to and then yeah. Robin, I just came from Jamie. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what is going on here? This is... And everyone who I was talking to, I was like, oh my God, I just did the blonde... Um, Vegan, what? Oh my God, I just did the bond vegan, the balance <laughs> bond. You knew um, me in the TBV days. Yeah. And I'm like, that's so funny. Like, she keeps on coming up. And I am becoming more and more. I've been listening to your podcast a lot lately. Um, do you know who else I loved on yours? Um, Morgan. 
Morgan, the, the Southern, Southern Yogi. Yeah, she's amazing. I love her. I know. I, I love her so much. I really love her. And I don't even do that kind of yoga anymore, but right. like I love her. That was a great podcast. Yeah, I would say, thank you. I would say she's my favorite person to follow on Instagram. Me too. I um, ask everyone to follow her. Yeah, same. I, all of my friends know, <laughs> like, we're going to talk about the Southern Yogi, her life, like her... Yeah. her kittens or cats, like everything in her friendship with Jessica, who was mm-hmm. on this podcast too. Yeah, I listened I just, to that one. <laughs> yeah, I think they're both so genuine. Yeah, I think what's interesting for me is that she's she's young, right? Well, how old is she? Morgan's 27. She's my age. And Jessica, yeah. I think, is 22. Yeah, and I find like what's so beautiful um, about both of them is that like they're such old souls. And so like listening to them speak about it, like you would think they have so many years of wisdom underneath their belt. And like, it's so amazing. You as well. You're definitely in that category too, to be able to be so evolved and like really getting to know yourself on such a deep level at such a young age. It's like so amazing. Like I was, I was a philosophy major. So when I was 19, I was trying to study the brain, but like I went off the loop. I went crazy, (laughs) you know? And that's, I think when the disordered eating happened, but it's nice to see all of you really positive, like investigating your life, investigating your mind, investigating your choices and not doing it in a way that is like detrimental to yourself, but really beautiful and blossoming and inspiring for all the people around you. Thank you. Yeah. So that we can always evolve and I mean, Morgan and Jessica are such prime examples too of like they both got divorced very young. Oh, and I didn't know that she did too. I knew yeah. that Morgan did. Oh. Oh yeah. Jessica just recent more recently. Um, so the, talk about walking away from something that yeah. has been so such a big part of your life. And same with you with ginger snaps. So what would you say the hardest part of walking away from the restaurant would be? I think that because of we're a label society and because we're so there's so much of our worth built into like what we do for a living, the part that was really scary for me was like becoming irrelevant, you know, and and not and not having a, a great answer for like what I do, you know, and like and and also because like I had a restaurant, it was a very clear answer. So now when you ask me what I do even though it's clear that I'm like doing the coaching, it's like getting to describe it is a little bit different because it, uh, each session is different. And so it becomes like not clear cut. Like I had a very clean answer before. Mm-hmm. I run a vegan restaurant. That's what I do, you know? And a lot of people come and cleanse there. Now, depending on who you're speaking to, you have to use words so they can understand it. And so it becomes like my husband's family is like, very like they're Texas and like they're just very different than this. But I'm able to speak to them in a language where they all love it. And like finding that and like I was scared to even tell them that I was doing this because I thought that they would think it was like bullshit. And like, you know, and even my father, I was worried. And my father's like, well, that's brilliant. He's like, it kind of sounds like the cognitive therapy you did when you healed your like eating disorder. I'm like, yeah, I, I guess that that is sort yeah. of what it is. So, so cool. Yeah. That, yeah, that your dad or that, yeah, your dad, but different types of people support it for kind of how they see it in their different ways. Yeah. And, and yeah. And I think for you, right? Like the identity stuff. Yes. That's such a huge part. Mm. So when you were having your session with Lacey and you couldn't think of any expanders for mm. the restaurant, mm-hmm. who would your expanders be now? Lacey. <laughs> yeah. Lacey's a huge expander for me. Like probably one of the biggest, probably the biggest one for Lacey. And like, I'm lucky because we're friends now. And so... I get to really see and watch her expand from like, and like, she's so interesting. Cause like, I'll say to someone like, this is what I see I'm going to be doing soon. And then like, it'll, it'll show up and that will be what she's doing. And I'm like, she's such an expander for me on so many levels because I watch it from a close thing and I see how it's happening. And it's like so genuine and so authentic and so in line with what she's supposed to be doing. And I don't mean that I'm doing all that digital stuff. It's just like in the way that she sees a vision for herself and it's able to like flow into that very, very nicely. Who else is, I mean, I think that she's just like such a clear one that Mm -hmm. I don't even know, but I can see it now in almost everyone I meet. I can find like areas in them that they they act as an expander for me, you know, And, and I can just see expansion in all of it. And I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Like in you? 
Yeah, you know, like watching you and seeing how you evolved is pretty beautiful. I love that yeah. so much. Yeah, she's she's such an expander, totally. I see her that way too, even in ways that like she's so good with boundaries and <laughs> so good not with boundaries. taking on too much and not committing to, I mean, she's not even seeing private clients at this point. I and I mean, I wanted to see her. I wanted my best friend to see her. And she's like, I'm just not seeing yeah. clients right now. And to say that to someone that, yeah, you've become friends with is, I have so much respect for that. Yeah. That's what I struggle with. Yeah. Boundaries are a funny thing because like I'm actually, boundaries I'm really good at. But for me, I think I almost have to like not have as strong boundaries as I have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And But I think that also I learned boundaries because with ginger snaps, I had none. Mm-hmm. I had none. Like I was really bad about, like I had no... That's part of what wore me out is I had no boundaries with my staff. I had no boundaries with my clients. I had no boundaries with any of it. Um, And boundaries are important because you can't, if you don't take care of yourself, you cannot show up for anyone else. And I think like Lacey's a really beautiful example of someone who absolutely knows that she must take care of herself in order to show up and do the work that she is guided to do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's amazing. So cool. So now you have your expander and your expanders because it's so beautiful to find in everyone what it was that you weren't able to find at all when Mm -hmm. you were really in the dark. Yeah. And so that's an advice to someone. If you can't see anyone doing it, well, it's different. If you can, if you can't see anyone doing it, but you can see how you can like change the vision and do it differently, by all means, Mm -hmm. do that. Totally. I, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. No, you were just like, this is no, not, this, this is not what no. I want anymore. So cool. So we're going to go into the rapid fire questions that okay. I ask everyone who comes oh, on. You don't have to be super rapid, it. but okay. yeah, they're so fun. So, oh, first, this is an easy one. What is your sun rising and moon signs? Um, if you I know. Am, yeah, Scorpio and Sagittarius. Amazing. Yes. So wait, Sagittarius, is that... Is that fire too? I actually, it's funny with astrology stuff. And I say this whenever I write about the moon. I'm very connected to moon cycles. Right. Um, with my signs, it's also different because obviously depending on what year of life you're in, what what it brings out in you. And I, even though people tell me I seem very Scorpio, like I think I'm much more Sagittarius. Right. Um, so I don't, I'm not a huge person of like, oh, she's so Capricorn. She's so this. Except for with like my husband, he's very Virgo. He but, is, yes. yeah. <laughs> totally earthy. Totally earthy, very, yeah. very calm and centered where I'm like the lunatic. Right. So you're, I just looked it up. So Scorpio is water and Sagittarius is fire. So oh, that makes you. sense. Yeah, yeah, you're like, you're balanced in that way, the water and the fire. Yeah. I see it. But I, and I think it makes sense. I feel much more connected to Sagittarius because I'm such a fire. That's just like how yeah. I run. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, that's you. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. So what is your dream vacation? Ooh, my dream vacation. My dream vacation is to have um, a yacht and go through with a whole bunch of my friends through like the Mediterranean. That, and it's actually one that like we literally like I do believe I know it will happen because my husband and I have like been on like those sites where you see like whenever we go over there, we'll like read the name of the yacht and we'll look it up and you can see like on this one website, like how much it is to rent for a week, like how much staff it comes with. So oh because gosh, we'll focus cool. on that, I believe that will happen. But yeah, that's the dream. Vacay. Yeah, you will manifest <laughs> that. That sounds so fun. Maybe you'll come. It's going to be a bunch of us. Oh my God. I would love nothing more. That would be so fun. Um, who are some of your mentors? Lacey would definitely be a mentor for me. Um, Guru Jagat would be a huge mentor for me. She's also another, exp- she's a huge expander for me. I think um, she's amazing and so intelligent and brilliant and knowledgeable. I really love that about her. Gabby would be one for me. You know, um, Jenny. The irony is that I'm very lucky because it's a lot of my friends, you mm-hmm. know, are huge, huge mentors Who's Jenny? for me. Jenny Sensushi, oh, Healthy yes, Crush. Yes, yes. You should totally have her on. She's amazing. Yeah, I would she's love amazing. to. She's amazing. She's um, and she's really interesting too because she has like so much knowledge, and she's such a great writer. She's um, and she's doing things a little bit differently than anyone else. I love her. Yeah, but so all of them, I think, are mentors depending on what it is, and I'm looking to be mentored mm-hmm. from. You know. Yeah, that's that's so cool. Her, I should say, yeah. Chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. Really? Even though I eat a lot of chocolate, I really love vanilla. <laughs> yeah, vanilla is so good too. I love vanilla. Favorite crystal? Oh, without a doubt, citrine. 
I have my little altar and I have them all over my office. And they're actually the only crystals I work with is like citrine, selenite, quartz, rose, and amethyst. Like oh, wow. those are like my five and I'm super. My husband just bought me this, which is not any of them. But, oh, that's so um, pretty. Yeah, it's a cross. I'm Jewish. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> he says it's We're not. We're both Jewish. <laughs> he says yeah. it's not. And I'm like, is that a cross? Maybe it's not. He, it's, he it's says like, it's not. It's a tea. He's, he goes... It's a pendant. That's what it says in the receipt. We got it from like Love Adorned, which is like our favorite store. And so, so pretty. and um, it's a healer stone. He's like, it's a healer stone to protect Aww, you because he's like, anyone can touch it and it protects you. And it doesn't like let their energy get in you. And even though he doesn't believe in that stuff, he knows I do. So yeah. he got it so that I could feel protected. That's so, so sweet. sweet. So sweet. I love it. Yeah. If you were a color, what color do you feel best represents your energy? I would hope white. <laughs> totally. Yes. Yeah. You do. You emanate the white. Yeah. You do. Even though I just big fiery red head, but yeah, I would hope that would be white. Yeah. yeah. You do. Like Thank when you, you walked in, that's what was emanating uh, from every direction. As you too. Thank you. Like without a doubt. Thank you. <laughs> so cool. It's really cool to see. Yeah. You definitely, I think I've always had the white light surrounding you. I think for me, um, I'm growing it. I think there were different phases in my life when I lived out here. It definitely was around. And then that's why we have to be very mindful of our energy. Right, I know. We really can change it. But yeah, you've, yeah. I think, always had a glowing light around you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so cool. So tell everyone where they can find you. Uh, so um, Organically Jamie, J-A-M-I-E dot com is the website. And Instagram would be Organically Jamie. And that's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, and you're in New York. I'm in New York. Your beautiful office is in I'm Flatiron. I'm in Flatiron. Um, and then you can also, I don't do energy work at this point over the um, computer, but I do do just the talk part. The coaching part. Yeah, the coaching yeah. part. It can be virtual, but the energy is just in person. So cool. Yeah. I cannot wait to have a session I'm so, with I'm you. so excited for you I'm to come so back. I'm so excited. I'm going to like make you book your ticket like I know, ASAP. <laughs> I know. I want to come back. I really want to find some dates to come back in the next like month or month and a half. And I want to take your yoga. I didn't even realize that you were like fully teaching. I don't know how I didn't realize that. No, because so much has changed since I lived in New York. I didn't teach yoga at that time. Where did you Um, do your teacher training? Yoga works. Oh, that's right. I did mine. Oh, really? In, well, in 2003, I did it at Sacred Movement, which is no longer here with Southern uh-huh. Gray. And then I did it. I, I did my 200 level and my 300 level with Yoga Works. In LA or New yeah, York? Yeah, in, in LA. I with did it in who? with Annie Carpenter, who I don't think is doing it anymore. Is she? No, not at Yoga Works. I wish she was. She's um, amazing. I love her. <laughs> I did my 200 hour through Yoga Works when I was in college with David Lynch and oh, Anne wow. Van Valkenburg. And then um, 300. Right when I moved back to LA. Oh, really? And again with Yoga Works? Uh, with Yoga Works, with Gigi Snyder, who I oh, love. Oh, wow. Um, I didn't yeah, know that. because I had this huge epiphany. It might have even been in Kundalini that I need to be teaching yoga and need to be blending that into everything else that I was doing. Totally but makes sense. But then it expanded so much from there into, it's not even really about teaching yoga. It's more about teaching the mindfulness and mm-hmm. like body manifestation, awareness. Yeah. awareness, intention setting. Mm. So now, and now it's it's really too about like meeting my community in real life and getting to connect with people in real life, these people who follow along and it's just, it's so cool. I love that. Yeah, I love part of your story is that you like will often show all the people who are at the events and it's lovely to see you connecting with like the people who you inspire because it's it's so so helpful for them as well. It's so fun. Oh, I definitely want to go take a class. Yeah. So I'll have to come back. Yes. The New York class was so fun. Um, So there will be a lot more. Robin did it, right? Robin. Yeah. Robin was there. She She drove me. (laughs) 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 It was the best. We like showed up in her car. I'm like, where are we going to park? This is so (laughs) confusing. Um, But yeah, it was so fun to have her there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. She's a great one. I know. Yeah, well, her. thank you You're for welcome. coming on. You're thank amazing. you for having me. You Everyone, are. Everyone, go stalk Jamie on Instagram, her website. And if you're in New York, book her for a session because this work sounds amazing. Thank you. Yay. Bye. 
Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode with Jamie. She is such a light in my life. She's definitely one of my expanders, as Lacey would say. And I think if you have the opportunity to work with her in New York, then you absolutely should. Now you've heard all about her very cute office and flat iron and how she even manifested that into her life and her bravery to walk away from her restaurant to do what she's doing now is something that sets my soul on fire and I know will set yours on fire too. So check her out, follow her on Instagram, do all the things. And I also wanted to let you guys know about something a really cool offer here in Southern California. If you're interested in taking a trip to Ojai, the Ojai Valley Inn has so graciously offered the code TBB2018. So that's capital TBB2018 for a 15% discount off of your stay at the Ojai Valley Inn. I love, love, love that hotel. It's probably my most loved oasis in all of Southern California. It's just so beautiful, so magical. And I love that they're offering that discount to you guys because they want you to come stay and experience the magic too. So you can head to the link in the show notes to book that. That is a midweek stay that they're offering, but you can always do as I do and stay for a couple days midweek and then extend it through the weekend and just pay full price on the weekend, but get a discount on the first couple of nights. Or if you have a flexible schedule, you can just go in the midweek and it's amazing, super romantic, highly recommend the spa, highly recommend working with Nicola, the shaman. If you're there, if you haven't heard her on this podcast, you've got to go listen to that episode after this. So yes, head to the link in the show notes, use TBB 2018. And if you want to keep the conversation going, for this podcast and for all the fun manifesting soul on fire things we talk about in this podcast, head to the soul on fire podcast tribe on Facebook and I will add you into the group and you can join our tribe, the conversation. It's a really good place to stay up to date on what I'm up to and what a bunch of the listeners are up to. So you can make friends in all different cities and Finally, finally, if you feel called and inspired to rate and review this podcast, then I will send you my blogging tips and tricks document that I am so, so, so happy to send as a thank you to everyone who rates and reviews the podcast. So just screenshot and send an email to jordan at thebalancebond.com and I will send you that document if you rate and review. So thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for supporting my world and everything that makes my world go around, which is you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I hope that you're having an amazing, inspired, creative, soul on fire day. And I can't wait to talk soon. Bye guys.